God is good all the time. All the time. Amen. Amen. Well, for those of you watching it, oh, thank you. There's so cool. there was nobody on this side. Now they're now. Okay. It's come a long way, hasn't it? God is good all the time. Hey, please pray with me. Lord God, I just thank you um, for this time to worship. And I thank you for each person that is here in person and for those that are watching online at home. I thank you that we have a building that is warm and we have the opportunity to um, have the technology that, that people can participate even if they're not here. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. And I pray that you would keep that technology going, help all the connections to work correctly. And I pray that we worship you this morning, Lord. I, I know that many of us are tired, and it's been a long, long year. It's been a long winter, and it's only five days old uh, with all the snow and, and everything, Lord. But um, we thank you and praise you. We thank you for this opportunity to be together and pray that your name would be lifted high, that we would be drawn closer to you, that we would honor and adore and worship you for who you are. Thank you for your presence here. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and join the call to worship. It will be on the screen there, and you can follow along. Let's be called to worship by Psalm 148. Please join me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all geese. Fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Lots of great images in there. We talked about image today in Sunday school, and I didn't even plan that. We're going to just talk about images of who Jesus is and what he has done this morning. A couple of great songs to sing. Their uh, page numbers are in the bullets in there. If you want to follow, the words are on the screen. Let's sing praise to the Lord.
get seated. I invite you to join with me in the corporate statement of faith, the one that we've been saying all throughout Advent, and we now say this first Sunday of Christmas. Please join me in the corporate confession of faith. Is it on there, King? We believe in one God, the sovereign creator and sustainer of all things, infinitely perfect and eternally existing in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To him be all honor, glory, and praise forever. We believe that Jesus Christ, the living word, became flesh through his miraculous conception by the Holy Spirit and his virgin birth. He who is true God became true man, united in one person forever. He died on the cross to sacrifice for our sins according to the scriptures. On the third day, he arose bodily from the dead, ascended into heaven, where at the right hand of the majesty on high, he now is our high priest and mediator. We believe that the Holy Spirit has come to glorify Christ and to apply the saving work of Christ to our hearts. He convicts us of sin and draws us to the Savior. In dwelling our hearts, he gives new life to us, empowers and imparts gifts to us for service. He instructs and guides us into all truth and seals us for the day of redemption. I invite you to take just a moment of silent prayer and silent prayer of confession. Believers in Christ, hear this good news. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Have faith, believer in Christ. The newborn king forgives sins. Live today in that Christmas joy. Let all those living in Christmas joy shout Hosanna. Was it? Tell me what's different up here. What what is missing that was here last time you were here? Flowers. Some of the flowers are missing. Very good. Some people took their flowers home. What what, what was right here? Flowers. It had it had four different things on it that we lit. Do you remember that? Okay, season. It was it was round. Do you remember that? It had candles on it. Do you remember that? Do you remember the candles we lit? One, two, three, four, and we lit the big white one. Yeah. Where'd they go? Somebody took them. Do you know why somebody took them? Because it's Advent is over and it's Christmas time. Do you know? Do you know how many days? Because the snow is almost gone. Because the snow is, is well, it's not almost gone. It's just it just came. Did you hear what we said earlier? We talked about the snow praising God. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, Santa comes and put some presents 
under Grandma's tree. Santa put presents under Grandma's tree? Yes. And did, did you open them? Yeah. And, and you know what? You know why? We, do you know why? There are some presents for Eliza. Because there, she's my sister. Oh, I'm glad she got some too. So, you know why you give presents at Christmas? I got in two sleighs at my house. So I, if I want to ride on two, a sleigh, I'd come to your house? Two, two sleds. Two sleds? Did you have fun, Hunter? Uh, I did, I did, did, did I do sled riding? Oh. Uh -huh. Well, I, well, let I me, let me. I was still at home and set him inside of my home. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, let me ask you a quick question. Do you know why? You got gifts on Christmas? Because Santa comes last night. Okay. And also, people love you and want to give you gifts. Just like God loved us and gave us Jesus. Remember? Do you remember that? There's no presence under there, but there is the presence of God. Can you sing a song with me real quick? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Very good. Let's pray. Let's pour our hands. Yes, it does. Pour our hands. Close your eyes. Lord God, I thank you so much for Veda and Eliza and all of our kids. And I just pray, Lord, that as they grow, they will see your presence and the gift of your presence and how much you love them. And they will grow to be incredible men and women of God. And we just thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Who made you? God. What else did he make? Everything. And why did he make you and everything else? Very good. All right. There's some stuff over here. Good job. If you want to go sled riding, go to those stops, right? Yeah, free sled. Free sled. You don't have any more <laughs> Just whatever's in there, kiddo. I, I don't know what's in there. You'll have to see what's in there. Like I said, without really talking about it in advance just because the Holy Spirit is awesome and always does this. We talked about images and pictures a little bit in Sunday school, at least when I was in there. And that's really what I want to look at today is just some images of who Jesus is and, and what he does and just ask you to reflect a little bit, nothing kind of very deep or theological or historical but just some, some thoughts and some images for you this morning. So if you want to turn, they're going to be from Isaiah. Isaiah 35, and also Isaiah 11. And then if you want to turn in your blue hymnal, the other thing I'm going to tie in here is the lyrics to an amazing Christmas carol on page 255, Low Hallowed Rose, Air Blue. So before we get into all of that this morning, Will you please join me in prayer? Lord, I, I love the excitement of the kids when they come in this sanctuary. Um, the joy that they have to be here, and the joy they have. I, I pray, Lord, that they would continue to hear those words that, that you made them, you made everything, that you made them and everything else for your own glory. And we pray that the message of Jesus would go deep in their hearts. I thank you for these songs that we have, have sung this morning, very old songs, um, 
telling about the birth of Jesus. I thank you for the pictures we saw in the song that was our call to worship of, of the snow praising you, of the animals and the, the fields and all creation praising your name. You give us incredible images of who you are, and I thank you for that. Lord, I do pray that the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Pray that you would speak to us this morning, draw us closer, put us in awe, absolute awe and wonder of who you are, what you've done for us, and may we worship and praise your name. Thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We're going to talk about a little bit about two different images in Isaiah and then intertwine with the lyrics to Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. So, first, Isaiah 35, just verses 1 and 2. Hear the word of the Lord. The desert and the parched land will be glad, the wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. If you go backwards in Isaiah to chapter 11, I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of power, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. And finally, three verses of Lo, how a rose air blooming. Lo, how a rose air blooming from tender stem hath sprung, of Jesse's lineage coming as men of old have sung. It came a flower at bright amid the cold of winter when half spent was the night. Isaiah twas foretold it, the rose I have in mind. With Mary we behold it, the virgin mother kind. To show God's love aright, she bore to men a savior when half spent was the night. This flower whose fragrance tender with sweetness fills the air dispels with glorious splendor the darkness everywhere. True man, yet very God, from sin and death he saves us and lightens every load. We have images in those Isaiah texts. We certainly have some incredible images in the lyrics to that song, and they give us a sense of awe, a sense of reverence, a sense of worship. I told you this won't be too technical today. I'm not going to throw Hebrew and Greek at you. Not necessarily too historical. I'd love to hear Josh write up this song. I can tell you it's over 
421 years old. So as old as those Isaiah texts are, this Christmas carol that we're going to talk about and sing at the end was first discovered that we know of in 1599 in Cologne, Germany. That's exciting to me because when I was in college, our choir got to sing at Cologne Cathedral. We actually sang for high mass on Sunday morning on a very, very cold January Sunday morning in 1995. There's no heat in the Cologne Cathedral. We had our coats on underneath our choir robes and we were breezy. But that's not what's important today, the history or anything technical. I want you to think about the images. And when you think about those images in Isaiah and those images in the carol, I believe you will be drawn to the conclusion that Jesus is the prophesied God-man who came to save the world from sin. And that's a beautiful image. May we worship him in awe. Jesus is the prophesied God-man who came to save the world from sin. And that's a beautiful image. May we worship him in awe. We're going to look at those images of joy and gladness. Look at Jesus as the true God and true man and the Savior. And then talk briefly about how he dispels the darkness. Did you listen as I read those Isaiah passages? The first one talked about a desert, parched land that was suddenly glad. It talked about a wilderness that was rejoicing and blossoming. Well, if you think about that for a moment and ask yourself this, what has happened? Something needs to happen in order for a parched and desert land to all of a sudden be glad. What would happen? An, an event. Most likely refreshing rain. Refreshing rain. Something happens that all of a sudden makes the desert, makes the parched land glad. And then it's described like a crocus bursting into bloom. Isaiah says, Inspired by the Holy Spirit, it will be glorious. Then he says, it will cause people to see the splendor of God. Well, what is this thing? What is this event that causes all of this celebration? Isaiah was foretold it, the rose I have in mind. With Mary we behold it, the virgin mother kind. To show God's love aright, she bore to men a Savior. This thing, this event, this flower bringing joy in the desert wilderness was the birth of a person, born of a virgin, born to show God's love, born to be a savior. What causes celebration of refreshing rain? The coming of God to earth. There are images of celebration in that Isaiah text. And in the second one that I read from Isaiah chapter 11, there's images of peace. If you were listening when I read, and if you read it again later, again it's Isaiah chapter 11, 1 through 10, you will see that there is one with a belt of righteousness. That sounds familiar. One with a sash of faithfulness around his waist that will bring peace. Well, how do you know that he will bring peace? Listen to this. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling will be led by a little child. Cow and the bear feeding together. Lions and oxes eating straw together. Infants playing near snakes. Now, I'm not the world's greatest person on animals and what they do, but I, I do know that in our experience, in fallen, sinful, broken humanity, and in this world, if you have a wolf and you have a lamb, the wolves have a lamb for dinner. If you have a leopard and a goat, 
There won't be much goat for very long. Yet Isaiah is told of this time where this one will come, a shoot from the stump of Jesse, that will bring about these images that we could never comprehend right now. Lo, how a rose air blooming from tender stem hath sprung, of Jesse's lineage coming, as men of old have sung. This entire time when the Advent candles were here, we said week after week, as the readings went by, that the entire Old Testament points us toward the coming of the Messiah. From Jesse's lineage, from the house of David, from Bethlehem, and what we celebrated just a couple days ago is that this one has indeed come. And it's a source of celebration. It's a source of peace. Because this God, man, and his life and what he will do brings peace between God and sinful people. So this coming of Jesus is not just some ordinary child. This coming of Jesus is the coming of the God-man Savior. True man, yet very God. From sin and death he saves us and lightens every load. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, chapter 2, verses 14 through 18, we clear, we hear clearly that Jesus is like us in every way, except without sin. Inspired by God, the writer of Hebrews chapter 4, 14 says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who, in every respect, has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Going backwards in Hebrews to chapter 2. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise a faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This one that came that causes celebration and brings peace identifies with us. He's not like our politicians that we have such a problem with who are living their own life and completely out of touch with us. He knows exactly what we go through. It says he in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet he didn't sin. That's why his sacrifice works. He's true man, yet very God. John 1.1, 1, 1. in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Inspired by God, Paul in the Philippians, chapter 2, 5 through 6a, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God. And then it goes on to talk about what Jesus does, being in very nature, God. True man, yet very God. From sin and death, he saves us. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Jesus, when he was older in John 11, said himself, Whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He was talking to Martha, and then he said, Do you believe this? And then that verse, true man, yet very God from sin and death, he saves us and lightens every load. It's the invitation of Jesus, Matthew 11. 
Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Sounds like us in 2020, doesn't it? Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We looked at images of celebration and peace that come from Jesus, the one who is truly God and truly man. And just real quickly, he dispels the darkness everywhere. This flower whose fragrance tender with sweetness fills the air, dispels with glorious splendor the darkness everywhere. The fall before Jesus would go to the cross, he went to the cross in the spring. The preceding fall at the festival of booths, at a time when the temple would be lit with all of these Lanterns, and there would be light everywhere that they said you could see for long distances. In the midst of that celebration, Jesus shouts out, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Earlier in John, when Jesus is being described in chapter 1, it says, in him, in him we find out, verse 17 is Jesus, in him was life, and the life was the light. With sweetness fills the air, dispels with glorious splendor the darkness everywhere. Tumbling. Tumbling. To think. To really think and to really meditate on the fact that God loved rebellious humanity so much that he would say, I'm going in. I'm entering that for his own glory, for his name's sake. I hope that you will think about and Meditate on and, and, and read again those images of celebration. Images, incredible images of peace that can only come about when something is done. When the one who is 100% God, 100% man, whose life, death, and resurrection saves us from sin and death has come and gotten rid of the darkness. Well, Pastor Jefferson, that's too good to be true. It sure is, isn't it? It's too good to be true. And it's exactly what God has revealed to us. It's too amazing for words. My prayer is, for myself and for each of you, and for those of you watching today and maybe even weeks from now, is that you will worship. You will be in awe. That your heart will be open to Him, to what He is doing in your life today, and what He will do with your life in the future. And that you will trust him and honor him and worship him. Because one has come to bring celebration. Like a flower blooming in the middle of a desert. Joy and peace and light in a world that is incredibly dark. Jesus, the prophesied God-man, came to save the world from sin and death. I think that's a beautiful image. May we worship him in all. Lord God, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you for the deep, deep love. 
as I read about this song that we'll sing to close our service, it, it talked about it having a hint of melancholy in it. Where it's a joyful song, yet there's a just sort of this feeling of an anticipated sadness. And it's because it ties together the birth of the one that brings about this peace and this celebration with the sacrifice on the cross that will complete and secure that peace and that celebration. Lord, we can never preach Christmas without Easter. And I thank you for that. So in this world, Lord, that just is different than any of us anticipated even five months ago, Lord, um, speak to us who you are, what you have done. Fill us with awe. Fill us with wonder. And help us to follow after you day after day after day. Lord, I pray that if there's anybody here today or anybody watching online that has never understood what it is to, to have an actual relationship with you, maybe in their mind or in their heart, you're just kind of a, a thing out there, a, a religious image. I pray that today would be the day of salvation when, when they, in their hearts, say, oh, I understand who you are, Lord, and what you've done. And I turn to you, and I trust what you've done on the cross. And I'm your child, now and forever. Lord, I know that, that there are those here and those watching online that, that have understood that for, for years and decades. And I just pray for it to be strengthened today, for their faith to be strengthened, strengthened for them to be drawn closer to you, for us to rejoice that you have come to bring celebration, to bring salvation, to bring peace, and to bring light that we so desperately, desperately need. Thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We are called to respond to God's word by giving. Um, I believe the offering plate's not back there, but there's a basket back there today that you can give in if you uh, are led to do so. I know people have been giving online and sending things in, so thank you so much uh, for that. Let's sing praise to God for that. Let's sing the doxology. <laughs> We also respond to God's word by um, coming to him in prayer. Certainly, um, Kim, our sympathies with you and your family, loss of your father-in-law. Please pray for the McDougal family, for Jesus' peace. Um, anything else you would like to mention to uh, lift up this morning? Pray for those who are um, dealing with sicknesses. We have some, some friends that um, haven't seen in a long time whose extended family members are very sick with COVID. Um, they could definitely use uh, your prayers in that situation. Certainly um, lots of people dealing with all kinds of issues concerning that. And um, lots of things to, to bring to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you and I praise you for another day. Lord, this congregation knows me and they know I do not like snow. 
but we thank you for it. We thank you, indeed, completely humbly and honestly, I thank you for each thing you give us every day, whether I like it or not. Thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for the birth of your son, Jesus. Thank you for the gift of a, a congregation that can be together to lift up your name, give you praise. Thank you for the gift of music that Aaron shares with us on a regular basis and share with us on Christmas Eve. Others, Katie, that shared on Christmas Eve the amazing um, gifts and, and talents you've given to our praise team, Lord. I just thank you and, and, and praise you and lift up each one of them. Lord God, I thank you for those that are, are watching online. Some may be uh, blocked in their driveway still from the snow or just a little bit too cold this morning. Others may be staying away because of, of the virus and concerns with that. But Lord, we, we miss those that can't be here in person. I am so thankful that they can be with us and they can worship you. You are not bound by where we are. But Lord, we do long for and ask for the day uh, when those folks can come back and join us and feel uh, comfortable doing so to give you honor and praise, Lord. So we lift them up and we thank you and praise you. Lord, I pray for those that are battling cancer. I lift up Penny and just thank you for her and ask for healing in her body as we've been asking for so long. Pray for Dave Figley, Lord. Ask for your healing in, in his body. I pray for Mitzi and for Betty Ho. Lord, I pray for those that um, are dealing with sicknesses, whether they're colds or sniffles or whether it's this wretched COVID virus. Lord, I pray for our friends, grandparents that are so sick. And Lord, I we would like to see them healed. That's our hope. That's our prayer. We would take this virus from them. Lord God, I pray for your mercy upon everyone. Pray for families, Lord, that the peace of Jesus would speak to families and, and situations. We pray for those that do not know you as Lord and Savior, who are against you. Oh Lord, we need you to turn our hearts of people to you for revival, and we pray for that. Thank you for the other churches in our area, and pray that they would also be preaching the love and grace of Jesus Christ, and we thank you that they are, and we can do things together for your glory and your honor. Thank you for those that have served over the last few months delivering food in Jesus' name. We pray for our preschool ministry, for our elders, our deacons, our Sunday school, everything, Lord. Pray that you would get the honor, and you would get the glory, Pray for those who serve our country. Pray for our leaders and, and, and the, those that are in authority. Lord, we need people that are wisdom from you. And we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ that are persecuted around the world. Now would you hear us as we come together praying with one voice the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Well, just a few um, announcements before our closing song. One is that what goes up must come down. Next week it is time to take down the Christmas decorations. Uh, so if uh, you can stick around next week, the more people we have helping out, the quicker it'll get. 
but it's, uh, it will be time to take them down next Sunday following worship. Uh, you see in there, just thank you. Uh, many of you have helped deliver food boxes uh, three different times over the last um, month and a half, and I just appreciate that, and thankful for the other churches that were part of that, and uh, Lou McCarroll, who kind of spearheaded that. Any other announcements I'm missing? I invite you to stand. You're welcome to look at the, the rhythms. This is a, there's no time signature. Aaron just has to guess, as they've done since 1599. Um, it's on page 255 if you'd like to look. It's also on the screen. Let's stand and sing this beautiful song, Lo, How Rose Air Lily. sing that over in your mind and, and look at those passages in Isaiah this week and just be as we end to 2020 and head into the new year in awe of who God is and what he has done for us. Now receive the benediction. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.